Today we're going to be working with a Kohler 20RESA generator, a RXT transfer switch, which is the device to the right, and to the left of that is going to be a Kohler low control module. If you look off to the right of that R, um, RXT, on that other table is going to be the switch. That's going to be our main breaker, which we're going to simulate a power outage with. If you look to the forefront, this load bank is going to simulate our main service panel. Okay? These are, heaters down here are going to simulate the items that we're load controlling. On the front of them I have written certain devices. So we have oven, dryer, washing machine, and then over here, again to help you out, is going to be your main load, lights, refrigerators, TV, and all your essentials. So basically everything that you need or want to work on your home. So what this device does monitors the amount of work your generator is doing and the amount of load it's carrying in the measurement of amps while simultaneously monitoring frequency to ensure that the sine wave is pure and acceptable for high-end electronics. Down here is again those loads. The items that aren't necessarily essential to be running in the event of a power outage but it's nice if you could use them. What the low control allows you to do is use a smaller generator on a larger home by knocking off some of your larger appliances such as the ones I have listed here. Yes. Here are the heaters that we're going to be using, the specs. So each one is going to be putting out 20 amps and watts, about 4800. And it is a 240 single phase generator. So just here showing you that they're all the same. So no surprises or trying to trick you into thinking anything different. I'm familiar, this is a load bank. And a load bank is simply just a resistance in order to test a generator to make sure. What this load bank consists of is essentially um, oven top coils. So you see three or four eight inch coils with uh, multiple six inch coils. So um, down here are the resistance for each of those. Each of those switches uh, connected to a specific amount of load. And that's what we're loading up onto the generator and simulating it as if the whole home is on. We have 1250 watts, 750 watts, 1000 watts equals a kilowatt. Okay, it's a 20 kilowatt generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some initial load on it. Okay, what is that? We'll put two. All right, so there's about. Let's do this. So this is about 50% of that generator's total, right? So one, two, three, three point five. about 10 to 11 kW on here, okay? That's what we're going to hit it with as soon as it comes on. So, flipping the switch. Everything's ready. Generator was in standby. Yep. There you go. That click you just heard was the transfer switch transferring to the generator power as it's shown there. This is the low control module here showing you that all the loads have dropped off waiting for them to be added. And as we look, we can see the generator is putting out 240 volts at 42.6 amps and the hertz is right at where it should be 60 to 60.1. If we take a step back here, what we'd be able to see is the low control module um, being so right now we have the A, B, and C loads turned off, right? Because remember they simulate washing machine, dryer, and the oven. Now, I just cut the film, and we have missed about 45 seconds to a minute of film. Um, and as you're going to see, there's a few more seconds to go yet. So all in all, it's about two minutes between the first one and the second load comes on. And it, that's not set every time. It really depends on how much load there is. The reason that the generator waits a longer time is because if there's more load on the generator, it's going to give it more time to make sure that load is stable, right? Because the last thing it wants to do is keep bringing things in and dropping them off if there's spikes in the, the amount of current that's being pulled or if it drops way down low and it thinks it can add a bunch. So it adds three or four, then they all drop off right away. So it does go through a, a time calculation in order to make sure that it's stable and it's not constantly dropping things in and out. So as you can see right now, 
the A loads pulled in, then the HVAC A came on. We do not have anything attached to the HVAC A. B will pull in, there, there it goes right now. Um, we, you'll, what we'll notice here is that none of the, the load is being affected because remember, these are the dryer, washing machine, and oven. So unless they're on, the moment these items come on to line, they're not going to be pulling any load, right? So the potential will be there, but they're currently not pulling any load. So if we go back and look at the computer here in a minute, um, you're, you're going to see that it's still going to be at that 42 amps that we started with, okay? Because those other items are not on. So what we'll do now is simulate a homeowner who really needs to do some laundry, okay? So... What we're going to do is we're going to turn on the washing machine, okay, because remember the generator is only pulling 42 amps now and it's rated for 83 on propane. So this load is now on the washing machine. The washing machine is going to pull everything up to about 60, 61 amps. Okay? Now, obviously when you're done washing, you're going to need to dry, right? So now we're going to turn on the dryer. If I can find the knob, there we go. All right, so now that's another pretty big load that we have on there, and that load's going to take us all the way up to 80, okay? 80 is pretty darn close to 100%, all right? So it shouldn't shed right away, remember, because it's going to take a little bit of time to analyze what's going on, and then it's going to decide, okay, it's been so long, I need to go ahead and get rid of it. Now, what I just did is on the load bank, I just flipped a couple switches, and I'm going to show you here in a second. I just turned off some of the load that we had on. Remember, all these were up before? So I just turned those off, which is going to lower our amperage or how much work the generator is actually doing. So this is simulating you turning lights off in your house or the things that are always on. And that's going to take us back down to, if I could zoom in here, is uh, 70 amps. Okay, and that we will remember we were almost at 80 before. So now you're doing laundry. All right, your washing machine's going, your dryer's going. And now you really need to cook dinner, right? So you're going to turn the oven on. So there goes the fan blowing the flag up. And we're going to look. And that one, remember, it's 20 amps. So it takes us from 60. And now, or 65, looks like we're pushing 87 amps, right? So that's actually above the 100% rating for the generator. The generator, like I said, is 100% at 83 amps. The hertz were fine. Everything is the way it should be but it realizes it's a little bit high. So it's gonna drop off C. And C corresponds to our dryer because that is the lowest of the priorities. So it automatically does that. So load management or load control or however you wanna say it, that's exactly what it does. Is it prioritizes loads according to how the customer wants them set up. So in this circumstance, this person value being able to cook dinner a little bit more than being able to dry clothes. What I just did was get up from turning off the oven. So now we simulated you're done making dinner. That took the amps down to 50. So now there's room on the system, right? So it should be adding the C, which again was our dryer. And I skipped forward in film because it's been going about a minute. So C should be pulling in here in just a second. Yep, there it goes. So now, since we're done making dinner, the oven's turned off, that workload's gone. Now the dryer's back on, running at about 68 amps. The washing machine's on, your laundry's going, and you are able to finish your laundry. Now is simulate walking through the house and turning on lights on your, um, your main panel switch, so things that are not being shed. So you're walking through your hallway, or you turn on your yard lights, there you go, flip the switches, and now, that amperage draw is going to bring it up from what were we at before, at least somewhere at 70, up to 78 amps, okay? Now, remember, this is the stuff that gets shed. Those lights will always be on. They have priority. The C is the lowest priority that is currently pulled in. So it's realizing it's pretty high above that 90% threshold that I have it set at, and it's going to be dropping out here momentarily because it realizes, hey, I'm a little bit higher than I should be. So just in a few seconds here, C is going to be dropping off. There we go. C has gone, which correspond to your dryer. So now your washing machine's going. And let's say you had one load to do. That means when you could turn off your dryer and then um, flip-flop basically one machine at a time, and you'd still be able to keep going. 
Um, so your oven's off, the washing machine's the only one going, and that's how the system works.